17 years. It's been 17 years since Metallica started a new phase in their history. The band changed in so many ways, but the pivot change of this new era was, of course, a new bassist, Rob Trujillo. Or as the true fans should call him, Roberto Agustin Miguel Santiago Simon Trujillo Veracruz <laughs> Kazoo. <laughs> Hi friends, it's Andriy Vasilenko and Robert is my personal hero. <laughs> And some still refer to him as the new Metallica bassist, despite the fact that this year has been longer Metallica than Jason and Cliff combined. And in just four years, if nothing goes wrong, half of the entire Metallica history will have been with Roberto. He was the one who initially inspired me to play bass back in 2009. So I consider Robert Trujillo as my first bass teacher in absentia thanks to YouTube. And one video in particular, his bass solo from Big Day Out 2004, it just, it blew my mind. And that video, despite its awful quality, was my point of no return in the rabbit hole of bass, and maybe even Metallica in general. And then I watched some kind of monster, the movie, with the famous bass additions. <laughs> and Robert sounded and looked two heads above his competitors. And so got aboard Metallica train. <laughs> which I'm so endlessly glad for. And a lot of fans were not by the time has passed and Robert proved to be even better than Metallica could deserve. But there's one thing I've been wondering about for all these 12 years, yeah. Why Rob? Why the competition was so low? Why in the entire USA, with so many great bands and talented musicians, there were not at least a hundred guys as good as Robert, as a player and as a fit for Metallica. That audition should have been a bloody battle. It's Metallica after all, not some local garage band. Or maybe there's something we don't know. Maybe what we do know is just part of the story. A story so strategically crafted for the documentary. By 2001, Metallica had been on a hard mode for yet two decades. Now they are about to hit 40s and they cannot complain. Money, fame, legacy, all in excess. Whatever they do sells out in split second. But something was not right. Something was kind of broken in the band. Really fucking lame. And many things from inside and outside the band and dark world and music industry overlapped and led to Metallica. Snap. Bullshit. Ass. Fuck. Delete that. Dick. How hard is it to be a Metallica bassist? Only five people have ever known that and each could tell a different story. Each had his own sub-function and was treated not just like his predecessor or successors. Well, one thing is for sure. Metallica is a freaking freight train and a grinding machine. Being part of the most popular metal band means always being in the spotlight and under pressure from the outside world and themselves. Not to mention other challenges such as touring, not being with families for weeks and even months back in the day, and extreme mental and physical exhaustion. And Metallica still work hard despite being well off and on top of industry. Despite or because they are on the top. They don't want to become, as James said, a legacy band. They keep producing, keep creating. They still have something to say to the world. It's one of the criteria of a legendary band. You really gotta keep creating to prove that what you've done in your 20s, 30s was not a coincidence. Even if your music is not as groundbreaking as back in the day. And Metallica are that kind of bands. All right, and now back to the bass auditions from 2003. Just imagine yourself there. Metallica are on the verge of breakup. James has been in rehab. Their bassist, who's been with them for 15 years, just left because he didn't want to put up with tough treatment anymore, with the creative limitations and other stuff that we might still not know. And he left despite the biggest paychecks and recognition possible in metal. 
It may seem a dream job, and it indeed was, which Jason did acknowledge. But as the saying goes, with huge power comes huge responsibility. And the hugest pressure, especially if you came to replace such a figure as Cliff Burton. And now you come to replace the guy who replaced Cliff Burton. And you would suppose that the atmosphere within Metallica is now heated more than ever. Are you ready to take such a weight? Are you ready to go through tough shit, possibly even tougher than what Jason went through? Are the money and recognition worth that? And the dudes who went to the audition did consider that. I mean, it would have been awesome to be in Metallica, but I'm relieved that it didn't happen because it's just, I mean, it's, the money would be good, but it's a little intense, you know. They already were part of the industry. They knew the rules and they knew what is it to be a professional musician. And now multiply that on a magnitude of fucking Metallica. But turned out that Metallica did not let Robert through the cycles of hell, through the stuff that Jason had to deal with, the beast <coughs> come down. And so now what the new bassist had on his shoulders was just, just hard work, the tightest schedule and being watched by the entire rock and roll world. No big deal, yeah? Bullshit. A little backstory, Metallica got to seeking a new bassist when they were basically finishing Centenger. They did not think of it because that was not needed, Bob Rock was playing bass on the album. They tried to kind of postpone this decision because that was pretty scary. I think a lot of people thought that we were having trouble finding one. We never started looking for a new bass player until two months ago. We worked on ourselves. So when someone else steps in, they're not stepping in our shit, you know? And only when they got invited to Rock Icon, I think, they were told that they got to have the whole package. Four members with the real bassist. And so that was kind of kicking the butt. And they started searching for one. And now let's go through the bass audition video and see what we got there. It's actually disappeared from YouTube and I tried to upload it, but it got blocked. But you can watch it on other websites, Google it, or in our Telegram community, link in the description. Actually, the most quality version you can find. And here's what we got. They chose the most embarrassing shots for each of them, except Robert Trujillo. Robert came up last in the line every time to see how much better he was compared to others. But <laughs> even based on those clips, how could those guys fuck up that much? Such a simple riff where you don't actually have much room to, to mess up, to improvise that much. Like, play that goddamn riff in the goddamn key. Follow the band and that's it. Just feel, just feel like on the stage. And yeah, even though I sound like smart ass here, like, uh, what, what do you know about the stage? Yeah, I've played like less than a hundred gigs in my life, less time like seven, eight years ago, and I'm no match to those dudes. In their defense, I remember, especially having more of a big concert, my knees began shaking and my fingers became numb just because of the nerves, even though I knew the songs, I was ready to have fun, but it was something... Uh, imagine, you gotta stand on the stage, and you're... and you just go... and you cannot feel the frets? Good. And now multiply that by the magnitude of Metallica. Imagine how nervous they were. And that also was a test, because even Rob Trujillo was freaking out, so you can see that. How he moves his eyes, his hands, he was nervous. Uh, what, what, what five strings do you have? But the professionalism took over. And as soon as he got his bass, not his bass, but the band's one, he felt like a fish in the water. But still, I can even, I can just imagine what was going on in his head. So yeah, maybe that's the biggest filter. Who could handle the freak out the best? Imagine, you are setting up your bass in James, He's walking into the room with his guitar and chugging. Lars asks Metallica stuff, and Rob answers, I could try battery. And Lars goes like, battery? You can play fast with fingers. Yeah. Hmm. It's funny that even at that point, they were surprised by a fast finger style bass player. You know, 
I know that battery is not that difficult compared to some songs like even Blacken and Master of Puppets and Lars saying that and Scratch Head. Like, oh my god, it's such a rarity. It's actually pretty confusing. Considering that uh, that's a professional metal bass player has to handle it like a piece of cake. And what Rob does? He nails it. He kills it. And maybe at that point that new they found the right bass player. <laughs> <laughs> and when you look at the bits with other bass players, you see the reactions of Kirk, of the technician guy, who were cringing, who were trying not to laugh. Maybe that's just because of perfect angles, but no one was cringing at Robert, whatever angle you choose to film at. And uh, another guy that I mentioned last, who could not enter battery properly, Jim says, just follow. And he smiles, and they know at that point, he's not a fit. They could see them, like x-rays. And you know, it's not 1986, they could not just say, next. This time they had to be more kind, to actually give a chance to play with Metallica, once in a lifetime chance. And actually, it, this time it was different than Jason's auditions. Then it was like, just come and play, and this time it was invite only. They made personal calls to the bases they thought could fit, it was a big surprise to them, and otherwise they would not even think of trying to become Metallica bassist, but that was an honor to be personally invited by Metallica, you know? That could have been another reason why it was so weird and like unprepared and stuff. And with a lot of them they had good relationship, they hanged out, they just had fun, and actually if I remember correctly, Lars hanged out with Robert the night before his audition. They drank and Robert actually stayed overnight at Lars's and so the next day when he got to play he was underslept and hungover. That could have been also a test by Lars just like they did with Jason but in more soft form, a kind of endurance test and to see how compatible Rob is. Especially to Lars. He had to know he's gonna get along with him. But was there a good competitor? Medelka says they had like a couple guys in mind and the other one could be Pepper Keenan, their old friend. And you can see how excited Pepper is sitting on the couch listening to James and Lars saying they need a new bass player. He's so honored to be there and he's some part of him really wants that. But there's a clip on YouTube where they have this personal hangout and he speaks his mind that he actually doesn't want to get into this. Well, to believe me, I'm not stupid. You know, I, I, I play music whether I'll leave here tomorrow. I'm still doing what I do. I'm not worried about it. He doesn't want to get kind of preference. Pepper's expressive concern. He doesn't want to feel any favoritism going right. on. He meets all the criteria and they know each other. So the character compatibility is no problem. I think at some point or maybe at all, Metallica did consider him become their member. But he tried to dispel the disillusion before it's too late. Yeah, you could, you could hire some cat who could sing the shit and play bad. I mean, you could find somebody to do that, but you didn't want, I know you don't want that. I know a lot about underground shit and I have thought, I'm like, well, who in the hell could do it? I said, like, I came to, you know, three or four conclusions, two of which you had come here. Who could that be? First of all, Robert Trujillo was another guy. Everyone seemed to be fucking up audition. Who could be that? I don't know. Maybe he considered himself, but... And the other two guys could be Rex Brown and Dave Ellison. At that point, Megadeth was kind of hiatus, breakup, rehabilitation of Dave's arm, whatever you call that. So Dave Ellison could become, but he decided not to show up because that would not feel quite right. Even with the permission of Mustaine. And another guy, Rex Brown, you know, Pantera broke up at the time. And it was before Dimebag's death. I don't wanna gossip. Can you imagine Rex Brown still being Metallica bassist? But otherwise, he could be the fit. But actually, in one interview, Kirk said that they looked for someone who played with fingers. And one of the main reasons why most of them were immediately kind of rejected, because they played with the pick. But then, why they invited those guys in the first place? Thankfully, there was one guy. And you see how he has progressed. He contributed so much of music, especially on Death Magnet. Singing was his weak spot, but he, well, 
Lately, he pulled off Spear of the Bone pretty good. Could Bob Rock become or stay as Metallica bassist? In various videos, we can see that he's humbled when this topic comes up. Look me in the eyes. You want to be a Metallica? No. Not a chance. Come on, you, you forgot the opportunity of life. I'm as here. close to Metallica as I, I really like what I do. As I need to be. <laughs> but he cannot say that. He cannot say, take me in. He knew his duty as the producer, longtime mentor, basically. And he was a bit older than them, and he kind of lacked stage experience. In that regard, he was no match to Jason and Cliff. And just being able to play those bassy notes is not enough to become Metallica bassist, even if you are Bob Rock. But again, he could dream of that. Anyone could dream of that. You can dream of that. I can do that. And maybe he could have pulled it off, if anything. Maybe if everything gone wrong, if Robert or Pepper did not show up or for, for whatever reason Bob Rock remained Metallica bassist, at least for a while he could do the job. Bullshit. And I just discovered something that I should have read before filming this video, but actually it confirms most of my theories. Except one. I mean the book The Monster Lives, which is written by the creators of some kind of monster movie. They explain the inside of the base editions including. And yeah, I was pretty much right except one thing. I supposed that they deliberately made all the bases except Robert shown in a bad light for the purpose of making a more dramatic movie. Well, they actually said the opposite. It was kind of coincidence, so that you know, actually the audition stretched for several months. They did not show up all in one day. And only when they came up with this idea, well, they all played Foam the Beltos, Let, let's chop it and set it back to back, and then it was clear. And you know actually who was Lars's favorite? And Robert was defended by Kirk. And Lars switched his favorite to Robert after his second time he played. But before that, he was really into accepting Twiggy. But to the honor of that guy, he saw he wasn't a fit and he said to Lars, man, I was a man who used to wear dress. You think I am for Metallica? Chris Wise, who actually looked pretty good, he was suggestion by Bob Rock. And according to his words, one of the reasons he was unaccepted, I'm kind of joking, but... I was a lot younger looking, and they said you look like Bob's kid. And just to honor all the bases, they're really amazing on their own. I knew a couple of them before, including Jordy. Just look up clips uh, how they play. They're amazing. <laughs> just not right for Metallica. But still, how you could play in the wrong key? Thanks for watching, it's Andriy Vasilenko, and here next time, friends.